Keep an open mind. Keep an open mind. Okay, part two. I'm still here. Just, just cut where I wanted to start onto another part of cryptocurrency thread. I was talking about how Bitcoin, it's software. What kind of software is it? It's peer-to-peer -peer software. Why is peer-to-peer -peer software important? Because no one is really the dominant force in peer-to-peer -peer software. And why is that? Okay, so that is because generally peer-to-peer -peer software doesn't succeed unless it's a free software, not something where you have to pay to use it. Because if you had to pay to use it, that would probably mean that it's it's not it's centralized. There's a there's like a central control somewhere that authenticates. Oh, you you've paid for this software. You're allowed to run it. Peer-to-peer -peer software tends to be free, which means it tends to be open source. And open source software means typically that the community of people who work with it, use it, add to it, program it, they they can branch off into different groups. Like if some don't agree with others about the software, they can split and that's called a fork, you know, this group, suddenly there's 10 people here and 20 people there. And now there's two versions of the software. And the users can say, well, I, I don't want, I like these people and their ideas, so I'm going to use their software. And now there's two softwares, you know. But there'll always be some idea of which one is the original. So Bitcoin has like that. It, 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 people do try to kind of, every attack that like takes control of it by some group. But that always implies that they, they're going to start making the software different and that everyone who doesn't want it to be controlled by some group will just go with the other group. And it's a little bit hard to, to imagine unless you've thought about it before, but there's just, there's a community. If someone attacks the community and says, all right, that's it, you all stop. We're taking over Bitcoin, we're changing it to this, so it, it, its rules are different. The, the world will just go, no, go away. Okay, we'll just go on this other. You can make your copy of Bitcoin, but that's not really Bitcoin. And then the general consensus of people who understand how Bitcoin works protects it from being taken over. Which matters if it's money. So if you've put a certain amount of your wealth and stored it in Bitcoin instead of dollars or gold bars or in the bank in whatever currencies or the stock market or wherever you put it if you, instead you put some of it in Bitcoin it's important that you trust that it's not just going to get taken over and stolen or the rules change and that affect the value of it all those things so it's, it's spent there's been 10 years it just had its 10th birthday of Bitcoin running and all kinds of security attacks, upgrades, arguments about how to, how to program Bitcoin, the policy of it. And it, in that time, there have been new projects, like someone forked Bitcoin into something called Litecoin. But they didn't do it to attack Bitcoin. They just did it because they wanted a different version with different parameters, more coins, different speed of how often updates occur to its network which you call blocks so that that's Litecoin and it's not an attack and then because that worked then doubt now there's thousands of different cryptocurrencies and some of them have been written from big scratch others just keep making variations of the different branches of the software so so that's something that we're living through for many years is figuring out can you make, are these better than Bitcoin or crap? Or are they, they have some value? It's not as much as Bitcoin. Will one of them become dominant? All these things happen. And they're called alternative coins or altcoins. Okay, so that's the end of part two.